Hi guys, it's Hayley. Uh, I'm here today to share a process video with you. Today I'm going to make a page using this background that I've cut out on my Cameo. Now the actual shape, uh, well the hearts, they are like one die cut image that was designed by Vilna Furstenberg. If you want to look at any of Vilna's um, cut files, you can find her at um, iheartstudio.ca and I I really like hers and I like Kira Bradford's I don't like the Silhouette Store ones so much at the moment they seem to have kind of I don't know, gone a wee bit downhill I don't have a subscription anymore, I let that lapse in December so that's all good because I think the last six months I had a harder time using up my subscription so I'm happy to have no, no subscriptions at the moment and just buy the odd one here and there because I do have a lot from having a script subscription for like a year so I just while watching TV um, put little bits of tape in between all of the hearts just because it's a little bit of a tedious job and I went through all my scraps because I'm the queen of scraps and just pulled out anything that was in the colour family I was looking at and anything that was kind of square uh, I love doing this. I know that um, for some people it's you know, too time consuming, but I love feeling like that I'm using up you know, all these bits that would otherwise be in the bin and creating something uh, beautiful with it. And I do like the whole filling the negative space. I do this a lot. And I do the um, kind of large background cut quite a lot as well. I find that when you do the large background cut, and you do this kind of work with it, that actually the rest of the layout is very, very simple. Well, for me it is, because my style is quite simple, but I don't have to do much else to it. I put my pictures on and, you know, have a few wee details and that's it. I don't then go on and layer heaps of things and do a whole nother design, like this is the design. And it kind of allows you to use um, scraps of your six by sixes as well, which is always good because the the um, scale of them is you know considerably smaller, so you can still see a design um, in the small shape. And I like this one from Vilna because it's not uh, it's not you know they're not all the same size and shape. They're not all orderly, and I quite like that. It's the you know, chaos of it. So I use, uh, for my background paper, I just use American Crafts white cardstock. I find that that is best in the Cameo for me. I know other people use other things, but it's less fibrous than the basil. And actually, basil's not that easy to, to get where I live. I mean, I could order it online and things, but... I can get the large packets of the American Crafts cardstock here. So, and it's considerably cheaper than basil here. So, it's just best all round. I think it is slightly lighter, but that doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so here I'm going to fill some of the hearts with you know, sequins coming from behind. So, I just put a bit of tape down and kind of place my sequins down so that they'll fill the shape. These sequins are slightly larger and they're Teresa Collins ones so these don't take, um, it doesn't take quite as many. Now I apologise about this being really slow, I forgot to speed this bit up. Um, the other key with this is if you're going to do something like this, I stick it on the back side of the American Crafts paper because it's smooth and I make the sequins larger than the than the shape they're going to go behind, so larger than the heart. So I make sure that all my hearts that are going to be filled from behind with paper are done first because this is going to be much larger and it will be hard to get back in underneath after you've stuck this down. Sometimes I do uh, glitter paper coming from behind or you know, vellum. This one I just stuck with the sequins and the pattern paper. I'm going to use a glittery title, so I didn't really, you know, want to have competing things. And the glittery title is quite large, so 
it wasn't necessary but it's a great way of putting in like a, a tiny detail like an unexpected kind of thing it's nice uh, with the with the shapes cut out to put like a watercolor behind that you've painted okay so here you see me placing my heart over top to see that I've got enough sequence and then I just will cut them out into squares and put them behind so this is the final background and I like how it's come out that's that's pretty much what I wanted um, I kind of stick with a few color families like with the you know kind of aqua and the kind of corally pink and then put in a bit of grey and black here and there. That title is from, oh I think it's Notes and Things, that glittery one. This is the first time I've used it, I've had them for a wee while but uh, I've been kind of itching to actually use one so that's what I'm going to use today. That's just on a bit of like baking paper so I can move it around. And these pictures are from Christmas Day. Now I, I didn't want to introduce another pattern paper at the bottom to frame these. I didn't want to have, I wanted that kind of band of colour in the middle and then maybe a couple of wee details, but I didn't want like three wee boxes or four wee boxes of, of matted photos. But I didn't really want to stick them straight on either. So here I'm layering them onto tissue paper. So there's two pieces of tissue paper behind each photo. And these photos are from Christmas Day and it's a new tradition of ours to um, have a game. So this year we did a game. I saw it on Pinterest, um, you know, other than like a board game or something like that, like a game we've organised just for the day. I saw this on Pinterest where that I'd kind of seen the result. I don't know what they put in the middle, but it basically had like a round shape and then they'd put like chocolate bars and, and lollies and things and they just wrapped it with, sorry, I just whipped the microphone then. I'm using my hands. <laughs> when I'm talking about wrapping, I'm using my hands. <laughs> oh, good grief. Um, so, so there's this big round shape and it's got like chocolate bars and sweets and then it's wrapped up in big wide cellar shape. And then the idea is that you're supposed to have, say, gloves or... Oh, I apologise for that. Me putting my hand up then. <laughs> That's my indicator to myself to to cut the video there. My little girl was crying. Um, it was late at night and she wasn't feeling very well. So she was crying. But I, I put my hand there if I've got to run off quickly. And then I, and I haven't turned off the camera. And then, so I know to chop at that point. But obviously I didn't do that very efficiently. So <laughs> sorry. You could just take that as me waving to you. That would be fine. So anyway, this ball thing, this round thing. So basically, I think if it's adults, you're supposed to have like, kind of like the old chocolate game. I don't know if other people played that when they were kids, but I think you're supposed to have gloves on and, and a hat and a scarf and things, and you're supposed to make it you know, difficult to get the tape off. Well, it's summer here, so I wasn't going to do the gloves and the scarf. <laughs> but we did do the Santa hat. So basically, you, you know, throw the dice... And you've got to get a double and if you get the double you put the hat on and then you get to try and get the tape off for for as long as it takes somebody else to get a double and then they've got to steal the hat and do it and it was really simple it was really funny actually because i was like what are we going to use to put to you know as the round thing because i thought a balloon would be too fragile but we had this old um bouncy ball that had no well had some air in it but it was going to be thrown out so we used that and it worked really well so here I'm just putting my photos down and I'm adding a few details those were stickers the yellow one at the top and the aqua one at the bottom they're from Freckled Fawn they came in one of the Freckled Fawn kits um, as long strips and I've just trimmed off the bits I wanted and I just tried to include pieces I just tried to include, you know, a, a wee piece of something that the colour was already represented in the page. And then just some wee vellum bits from Maggie Holmes. Nothing elaborate. There's, I mean, as you can see, there's very little I actually do to the page after um, I've done that centrepiece. 
So, and basically I just replicated it at the top with the same kind of um, pieces, similar colours, that kind of thing. Now, I haven't decided whether I'm going to journal on this or not. I may, I've got more photos and it was kind of a good time to get photos of everybody just being silly. So I may do a you know, pocket page on the other side. I don't know. Um, I have some space under the top photos and above the bottom photos. If I decide to journal, I can pop it in there. That's not going to be a big deal. But I may do a pocket on the other side. I still have um, a very small amount to finish on my December daily. And then I do have to finish my project life. Oh, here I am pointing out where I made journal. Um, so I want to see, after I've done those two things, what which photos I have left and how I print in large amounts outside of the home. So I want to see, once December Daily is finished, once my project life is finished, which photos I have left and whether they constitute enough to make a page or will they fill out a story somewhere or something like that. So that's the only reason I'm not doing it right now because I do have more photos of this. But I still have it, it still is going to be in two other places, if you get what I mean. I've been contemplating that over overdoing. A few people have said, I don't want to do December Daily and Project Life and the same stuff in two places and all of that. I am thinking about that a wee bit as well. Because last year I did find a wee bit of overkill there. But I also find that I'm more likely to look at my Project Life other people are more look, likely to look at my December daily. So, I don't know. I still, I don't know. And both, are, both are valid and I enjoy both, but it, and both are not necessary at all. Well, none of it's necessary, <laughs> let's face it. Um, but, so I haven't figured that out yet, but I'll, I'll get there. But yeah, so I like how this come together. I'm just adding a couple of... Um, the wee sequin shaped uh, wood veneer from Chic Tags. I really like those because they're, they're just a wee bit different. They're just a bit more interesting than just a circle. And now I'm just going to add a few hearts. This kind of plasticky heart, what do you call that? I don't know what that's made of. This kind of apricot coloured plasticky heart, that's from Freckled Fawn. And I think the other two are from Ellie's studio. So just little small details. But I'm happy with that. And it's so nice to do a page where you're like, oh yeah, I like that <laughs> when you're finished. Not like, oh my goodness, it was hard work. But yeah, this wasn't hard work at all. This was great. So I feel like I'm getting back to um, my normal scrapbooking now, which is good. And I am going to be getting back into my challenges. Um, not just the book that I do for CSI, but some other challenges I'm interested in. I will be putting up some CSI. A few people asked me the CSI pages that I've done that I missed videoing because I was away on holiday. That I still did, if I could do a share of those. So I will be doing that. I'll share the challenge in the page. So that will be coming. Okay, so... That is my page. Thanks so much for listening and coming by and supporting me. I really appreciate it and I just love this community so much. And hope you have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you another time. Okay, bye.